evening, everyone. Welcome to my Super uh, Noboru Sugimura from Lupin the Third to Super Sentai and Beyond panel. And beyond! First, I'll just play the opening as I give a brief history about Noboru Sugimura. Which is So in 1948, a Japanese baby was born that was given the name Noboru Sugimura. Unfortunately, there's not much known about him because unlike really big popular people such as like Eiji Tsuburaya who worked on Godzilla, the Godzilla movies for Toho, created the Ultraman franchise that would go on to spawn an entire genre of superhero type shows, there's not a lot on him. So basically, in fact, the interesting part is when you search his name up online, the biggest part that actually describes his life is a Resident Evil wiki page. All of the other stuff he's worked on, Lupin the Third, Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, none of them basically just say he worked on this show from this time, he worked on that, and that's it. Well, Noboru Sugimura got into writing and worked on a TV show as an apprentice called Bark at the Sun, which was a crime drama. So a lot of his early writing credits deal with crime drawing, it was basically a crime show, and he had this high respect for cops. So throughout this panel, one thing you're going to see is that a lot of the clips I have utilize cops in competent ways because to him, he always thought it was an insult to portray cops as bumbling idiots as you will often see shows do, especially in superhero shows. After he did some episodes with the, as the apprenticeship with uh, Bark of the Sun, he moved on to his first solo writing credits, which was for the series Loop in the Third, and he worked on the, a bunch of the episodes in the late 80s and 90s. And aside from it obviously being kind of a crime drama, he also was really loved horror. I kind of call him, say that he was kind of like the John Carpenter of Japan when it came to being able to express horror, he could get the suspense and tension when necessary, and he, he loved it. And another thing he was interested in is our science fiction elements. He was obsessed with aliens and all your normal sci-fi-isms. In one of his early, first episodes for Lupin the Third, he actually integrated all three aspects into it, as you'll see in this clip here.
ジャンヌ君のお父さんの研究が今分かろうとしてるんだよ On Lupin the Third, he got a job at Toei. Toei wanted to do an adaptation of this manga series called Sukabendaka, which is about which is about a police girl with a yo-yo. She basically solves crimes and kicks ass with her yo-yo. It was a highly popularized manga. It actually not only did it have a live-action TV series, it had an anime adaptation. It's had a couple uh, live live-action movies. And some other spin offs throughout the years. Although, for some reason, they never really felt comfortable enough to bring this one to America outside of the two theatrical films. Which, I mean, granted, the concept of a girl with a yo yo、eh, could work, could not work, depends on the audience. But it's a wacky concept, which boils down to, oh, Japan. <laughs> ヤンキはギラギラしてきたな許せないよ印象たち獲物を前にしたヒョウのようないい目つきだ銃砲筋でできたヨーヨーが鉄を置くたく力がある今日からお前の武器だ<笑>なんだ2年4組浅宮咲き。She has learned that do not give me a raw file to work with because I will have a lot of fun creating my own subtitles. <laughs> Although the hard part is when the timing, when you're trying to time it in there, like I want it to be just right with the dialogue. After he did Sukabendeka, he went on to work for a TV series called Kamen Rider Black. Before I get into details on this, Back in the 60s, as I already mentioned, Eiji Tsuburaya, who had been working for Toho, decided to establish his own television studio, Tsuburaya, or who became known today as Tsuburaya Productions. It dealt with having pe- men in suits fight giant monsters. Similar to like Godzilla and stuff like that. They even used Godzilla suits in the series. Well, then a manga, a, a manga writer and artist named Shotaro Ishinomori decided to create his own tokusatsu. 
or what would become known as tokusatsu series called Kamen Rider, which was about a man who takes on the form of a grasshopper to fight an evil Nazi organization known as Shocker. The, the series was quite a success. Then, Toei would go along and decide, hey, we want a superhero team show. So they created Super Sentai with Gold Ranger. Well, one thing also with Kamen Rider is Shotaru Shinomori gave Kamen Riders a scarf because he hated capes. He thought superheroes were cape with capes were terrible. And I, all, all it makes me think of is that scene from Incredibles. No capes! Of course, he did give in when they did Super Sentai and gave the first Ranger team capes just to distinguish them from being different from Kamen Rider. Kamen Rider had been going on on and off over the, in the 70s and 80s, even though it was popular, they didn't have a series every year as other shows did. In the late 80s, they decided to do something revolutionary and have a Kamen Rider series that was different compared to other ones because a lot of the other series out there would have the Kamen Rider, there would end up being two or more heroes working together at the end of the series, whether it was Kamen Riders from another series or just new ones introduced in that series. Kamen Rider Black was the first series that had a Kamen Rider. He was the only hero from start to finish. Now, when Kamen Rider Black first came into production, there was a head writer who had some disagreements with Toei and Ishinomori Shinomori on the writing of the show, so he just walked away from the show. As such, Toei decided to take this guy that was kind of new, said, hey, we know you do cop dramas, can you become the head writer for this new series, Kamen Rider Black? So he took over the show, and it pretty much became the hit that they were hoping it would become. And he also integrated a bit more political themes into this series. And also, when you find out, because there are a lot of politicians who are actually working with the villains of the show, and the monsters, and the, there were monsters, well, obviously there were monsters, brain not working now. But he also included cops and scenes who would try to take on the monsters as well. So I have just a little bit of footage from Kamen Rider Black. <laughs> serious show and he's my favorite common rider and one of my favorite of the shows. After he, Sugimura got done with doing Common Rider Black, Toei was asked him to do a new type of franchise series known as Metal Heroes. 
Metal Heroes started in the 80s as a sci-fi space series about space cops who would basically take out evil empires and terrorists. And they were called Metal Heroes because their armor were Sentai, they would wear spandex. Kamen Rider was kind of more uh, cloth suits. Metal Heroes were armored suits. So I mean, a lot of them were shiny. So it just became the franchise known as Metal Heroes. Well, Toei said, we've already done a bunch of sci-fi series. And those in the, that might be familiar with it in the US, some of them came to the US in the 90s under the banner of VR Troopers and then Beetleborgs and Beetleborgs Metallics. But Telly was like, well, we've run out of ideas for ripping off Star Wars. We need something new. Hey, Sugimura, you know cop dramas. Can you give us some ideas? So the first series he decided to do was basically influenced by Robocop, about a detective who becomes, a half, who becomes half cyborg and has to fight evil creatures. Trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law. a success, so Toei said, hey, we want you to do another series for the, for the upcoming year. So he decided to do another cop show. This one would be a cop who would wear, again, wear armored suits, but he wasn't a cyborg, and he would have two robot helpers. The robot helpers I'll get into in a little bit, but this guy basically, they try to go with a more realistic approach with his armored suit because he would actually be sweating when he actually goes to take the armor off because there was a time limit he could actually wear the armor for, which was a neat idea as well, saying, hey, uh, you have this armor on, but you can't stay in that armor. And a lot of the stories, there was only two stories that actually dealt with aliens and the supernatural. For the most part, it was like runaway terminators, just normal everyday criminals, drug kingpins, and the like. Jack up! Yeah. <laughs> 
I have too much fun with that scene, or those scenes in general. So as I mentioned, he does have some robot companions. Two, one, one is Bike Al, who is based on a motorcycle, so he would ride on the ground, and the other, now I have an epic fail moment because I can't remember the other one's name, but he would be a helicopter type character. However, in one episode of the series, you find out later on that they had a third brother from the crime that was made for them. But they decided that, hey, you know, America and the FBI want, wanted this robot, so they sent them the robot on loan, and when he comes back into, comes back to Japan for one episode, he's kind of Americanized, let's put it. I think about you day and night It's only right So happy together パワーされたブライアンの攻撃力は以前の約5倍だそうでしかしその分大幅にセーフティーシステムが外されているそうですやもやもや試合に対する考え方の違いもある Again, Wind Spectre was a success, so they said, hey, we want you to do another series, which is going to be a sequel, a direct sequel to Wind Spectre. Because at the end of Wind Spectre, the main hero are asked to go to another country to establish a team there. So the commander decides to establish a new group called Soul Brain, which was meant to represent the soul of a person and the brain of a person. In this series, there were two heroes, a main cop again and a female cop this time who would wear armor, and they only had one robot companion, which was like this big bulldozer type character. The downside to Soul Brain is it felt like it just kind of was repeating a lot of the themes of Wind Spectre, so it wasn't as successful, but it still was a big hit and created was the second of what end up, ended up becoming called the Rescue tr Trilogy because there was another series after that followed it that was all set in the same timeline which Sugimura did not work on. And I'll get into why after this. Rescue Trilogy because Toei decided, well, Super Sentai's kind of in a slump. We need something new. Because by the, by the late 80s, the Super Sentai franchise, and if you don't know, it's what came to America as Power Rangers. 
The 80s had a lot of repeated aspects. The characters in most of the series were, had the equivalent of character development to cardboard. They were pretty one-dimensional. The villains did get some more development as time went on, but the Rangers stayed stagnant in each show. Usually it was, oh, you're the team of superheroes. Okay, cool. We are perfect superheroes. We will never argue with each other. We'll never have fights. We're good. Well, after a while, that can get kind of boring, especially when you have basically 500 episodes of it. So Super Sentai's ratings at, towards the end of the 80s went into a slump where the show was nearly canceled. They decided to take a risk when they hired this one guy to do a, a show that was called Jetman, which was meant to be a live-action version uh, retelling of Gatchaman. So that series, it, even when Toei marketed to people for auditions, they said this is a live-action uh, Gatchaman series, and then they turned it into a Sentai show. The series featured the first black ranger that wasn't a team player. He smoked, he was a womanizer, and he didn't want anything to do with fighting as a team. It wasn't until episode 32 when they actually, he actually said, you know what, we need to actually work as a team in order to win. So this series was a huge rating success. But he only wanted to do one Sentai show, the writer. So Toei was kind of like, well, what do we do? Well, you've got this guy who's a great crime drama writer. He is also interested in supernatural and science fiction. Let's tell, see what he can do. Let's just let him have fun with this concept and with the show. If it fails, we're not losing out on anything. But if it's a success, hey, cool. So they gave him the reins to do the next Sentai series. Well, Sugimura, being that he is, loves mythology and all that stuff I mentioned, said, well, I'm going to do first off, no more animal themes, no more vehicle themes. Let's do something cool. Dinosaurs. Because everyone loves dinosaurs. So he made it a show about a bunch of ancient princess, princes and a princess who will then who awaken in the modern day and it's kind of basically a fantasy show set in modern day Japan. Or modern as of 1992. Well, he also included a lot of mythology. All the monsters of the week were based on mythological creatures. And as I said, he really stressed that horror aspect in a lot of the show, despite having to keep some aspects for children. So here's just a couple scenes from Jew Ranger. Or it was the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in the U.S. <laughs> success, just like Jetman, even though it didn't have as high of ratings as Jetman did. So Toei's like, well, we liked you here. We want you to do another show. This time, Sugimura decided to tackle Chinese mythology. And all the characters are based on the mythological creatures of the uh, white tiger, the dragon, turtle, the Kirin, or unicorn, uh, as it's depicted in other cultures and the phoenix. 
And so this show delved into not only Chinese mythology, but also featured a lot of kung fu type fighting styles, like the drunken master style, the other ones that I can't think of now. <laughs> Shaolin was one of them. Shaolin, yes. Again, though, he put it, so while he also included that, he did have some plots that included cups. Again, to show kind of how serious things were. So I have here a little bit of just showing his respect for the law. Die Ranger was another hit in the Super Sentai franchise. In fact, it's become one of Japan's highest favored Sentai shows. It even got featured in a Sentai, an unofficial Sentai series Toei did several years ago called Akiba Ranger which was a late night TV series for those who grew up on the early Sentai shows. So they had like a, they, they had like a porn star to play the villain and she was very... Um, she was very flamboyant. And that where they, they had like this episode where the Red Ranger of the team, he was a huge Sentai fan. He was like, oh, every Sentai show does this, this, and this. And so the timeline, they t changed the timeline where Sentai was a ripoff of Power Rangers. And Die Ranger never existed. So they ha I, he got really upset with that because he's like, you can't get rid of Die Ranger from the timeline. We need to fix this now. So it was a great series. It's very short. Um, 26 episodes. Very adult oriented. So there's a lot of perversions. Um, one of the Rangers is a Fujoshi. <laughs> so she's always doing um, yaoi parodies between the villain and the Red Ranger. There's a lot of interesting things. And then also the show features uh, Vegeta's voice actor playing a villain who wears makeup from one of the shows. So he's sitting in bed with his makeup on his face without any clothes on like, yep, all right, come over here. Yeah, it's, it's hilarious. After Die Ranger, Toei had Sugimura do another series creating what they end up calling the Mystic Trio because it's all three of these series are based on mythology. Kaku Ranger this time was based on ninjas. All the main characters were named after actual ninjas in Japanese lore, such as the Toad, Jiraiya, Yotsasuke, Surahime. Daigo. No, not Daigo. Daigo was Dai Ranger. Sa Saizo and Suzu. Blah, 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 blah. Huh? Hanza? No, Suzu. Saito. So this series, they decided, okay, ninjas, so they're going to fight yokai. If you don't know what yokai are, yokai are Japanese ghosts. They take the form of everyday objects and... Possess them to do whatever. Possess people, 
maybe to scare people, maybe just to have fun with it. Like there's one episode where this Baka Neko, which is a cat demon, she kidnaps children so she can sell their body parts to other yokai for dinner. But one thing that's very common in Sentai, which we don't have in this clip, um, is most of the female villains are actually always porn stars in these shows. So in, in the some of the early, in, well, the earlier in, ones. In the, in the earlier Sentai series. So where they're all wholesome in America, where being proper American, made for kids, the um, Japan villains... Japan just doesn't care. Yeah, the villains are actually very pornographic in their representation, so it's actually quite amazing of what they're allowed to get away with on television for children. Because they'll be smoking in everything. So I have here another clip that features some more cops and evil cops who are yokai. <laughs> is like, seriously? Um, okay. After Haku Ranger, Toei decided, hey, it's Sentai's 20th anniversary, we want to do something special. So they asked Sugimura to write a show and have writers from the previous two decades of Super Sentai come in to write episodes. They were going to do this show about terrorists attacking Japan. However, a couple things happened with this show. One, Japan got hit by a great earthquake. Secondly, they had sarin gas attacks in the subways. So Toei decided that to change the show, well, we, can't, we don't want to have an actual terrorist organization, so we're going to have an evil machine empire. That came in, they invaded Earth, they conquered all of Earth except Japan. The show started out still serious, but because of how all the feelings were in Japan, especially because the first several episodes were already filmed or in the middle of filming when the sarin gas attacks happened. There's a sudden tonal change done during this show. Aspiring for a lot of the episodes. However, Sugimura, being the genius that he is, was like, well, even though those episodes from the other writers are having their tone changed, I don't care. I'm going to keep mine super serious. So I have here a clip of another episode showing his use of the supernatural in the most terrifying manner, and it is hands down one of the best Super Sentai episodes of the entire franchise, even though it's from the series that had the worst toy sales in, all, in the history of the show until 2012. <laughs> もう。お前がマイミのことに興味なんか持たなければ。こんな面倒なことにはならなかった。なんですって。マイミは川に落ちて死んだんじゃない。11年前にこの俺がさらったんだ。俺は可愛い女の子が好きでな。That's disgusting。それがマイミだ。マイミは僕に死んだ。
Now I have here what's called what I call the Soul Brain Oranger connection. It's Toei is not afraid to reuse the same scripts over and over again with their shows. Usually every Sentai series or every other Sentai series will have some type of idol episode where an idol is in some type of peril and she's like, yeah, or a ranger's given the opportunity to be an idol and then she's being either it's a plot from the villains or they're trying to disrupt her being an idol or some such. So I have here a clip from an episode of Soul Brain and O Ranger that featured the exact same plot. <laughs> they pretty much reused the same plot for both episodes and even had the same script essentially outside of obviously translators translating the dialogue differently but when you listen to it in Japanese they're pretty much the same words for word after all ranger which as I said was pretty much oh no 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 I, yeah all ranger had I missed, missed under misspoke what I said earlier all ranger had ex, I'm had huge toy sales, but it was the lowest rated Super Sentai show until 2011. Afterwards, after All Ranger, Capcom had been working on a video game series. A video game. It was called Resident Evil. I'm sure everyone knows what the Resident Evil series is. Zombies. 
Well, Sugimura, being that he's a huge horror fan, loved the first game. Capcom was developing the second game when their original writer decided to quit because, well, or got fired. It's not really sure which actually truly happened. They were 70% done with the game, and Capcom and Shinji Mikami, who was the creator of the first Resident Evil, didn't like the direction the game was going. So they scrapped the whole game when, Nobu and when Sugimura came into Capcom. He looked at what they had and said, your Resident Evil 2 script and story sucks. Let's just start over from scratch. So he is the one that decided to redesign Resident Evil 2 from the ground up to be the game that we know it became today, and then had a really kick-ass remake this year. So I've got here also a, cl a clip from Resident Evil 2. He also worked on Code Veronica's story, and then Resident Evil's story. So you finally come. Doctor, we're here to collect the G-Virus sample. Sorry, but I won't just hand over my life's work. Ah! You might hit the sample. That's it, all right. Okay, let's move out. William. Oh, my. Hold on, darling. I'm taking care of that bullet wound first. Stay here. Alpha team, have you retrieved the sample yet? Affirmative. We'll be at the rendezvous point in one minute. Roger. Are you telling me that he injected the G virus into his own body? The G virus has the ability to revitalize some of our functions. What was that? Something's wrong. Let's check it out. Over there! Shoot! Eat this, you hurry! I'm, I'm stopping it! What is this thing? While working on res various Resident Evil games, Sugimura also worked on the story to Clock Tower 3. However, also in production was a new franchise Capcom wanted to do for the launch of the PlayStation 2. This one would be set in feudal Japan during the Sengoku period, or Warring States period, when a warlord named Oda Nobunaga wanted to unify Japan into one country instead of being just a variety of small states. Well, Nobunaga is pretty much veiled as a hero today in Japan because of his accomplishments. 
However, back then, he was seen as a tyrant, a warlord, who was a mass murderer, trying to do what he did. So with the Onimusha series, the, so the Capcom decided to do this series called Onimusha, where they had it that Nobunaga gained his abilities to try to conquer and unify Japan by a demon. And these games pretty much lasted for a trilogy. The first one, first one dealt with a samurai that was made up for the series called Samanosuke Akechi, who is based off an actual samurai whose name is Akechi, and later on they decide to make Samanosuke a relative to Akechi. The second game decided to adapt Yagyu Jibei, who normally was a samurai who wore an eye patch because he lost an eye in battle. And then the third one gets crazy by introducing time travel and brings in John Renault as a French officer when the, when the Genma, the name of the demons, invade modern day Paris. So I have here the clips from the trilogy. <laughs> just transferred my power into this golden evil statue. Look at it! Anyone who witnesses it will kneel before Zod! when those graphics were considered groundbreaking and amazing and now we've gotten greedy with our graphics actually no that's not true game companies like oh people want millions and millions of dollars ported their graphics I want to play a sheep or a goose unfortunately Sugimura died in 2005 so that was pretty much the end of his legacy I would have loved to have seen what he could have done even more in today's world especially in the world of gaming with how much better storytelling has gotten in video games. With that said, that is pretty much the end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We do have a villains panel in two hours. An hour. In an hour. Wow. And also, as I said earlier at the beginning, I do have cards here for our YouTube channel because we've done a lot of co convention coverage as press, videos, photos that you can get from, and I'm recording these panels that we've done if you want to show friends like funny bits from them. Otherwise, anyone with question have any questions? All right, then. Oh, yes. So, what? Well, um, so then, uh, what? Sorry. In Resident Evil Two, we shift uh, the perspective of the story from the stars, you know, um, Jill and, and um, guy who punches the bowlers. Chris. Chris. <laughs> okay. Chris. Yeah, Chris. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Uh, from Jill and Chris. And we move on to Leon and Claire, so then, uh, who are actually a, rep, a raccoon city police department. So then, would you say that it's because of Nakayama, that, 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 did I get his name Sugimura? Right? It's, it's because then of Sugimura that uh, we have such a lit shift from like, uh, tactical military experts to cops? Not quite. The, they were already planning to do... It, the game when the original version, Leon was already going to be a cop. And then they had this other biker lady named Elza that was going to be in there. Sugimura threw out Elza and created Claire. Because he felt having a character that related to the first game would give it more impact because you want to see Claire survive. And he, he did keep Leon in there because 
yeah, as he was a cop, so he felt having a cop in there would make the most sense than just having another civil, uh, civilian. But yeah, as you can see that, because again, Leon is treated competently most of the time. So it all pretty much goes back to his whole background. Otherwise, think, was there another question? Did I see another? Okay. Well, thank you guys so much. Hope you had a good time. Until next time, bye.